Hi, my name is Londe Yusuf. And my name is Reggie Williams. And we're the co-founders of Black Film Space. Black Film Space is a grassroots organization dedicated to enhancing the skill sets of black filmmakers and building a community of creatives. We host events such as screenwriting workshops, panels, mixers, and other events that are designed to support black content creators. In the latest episode of the Black Film Space podcast, we interview Tyree Waribi and Kofi Dorma. Tyree is a graduate film student studying directing at the American Film Institute, and Kofi is a recent graduate who has studied directing at the New York Film Academy. We talk with Tyree and Kofi about their experiences and what they've learned at these institutions. And now, on to our interview. So, welcome Tari and Kofi to our podcast. I'm going to start off by asking Tari what your experience mm-hmm. has been so far at AFI and why you chose AFI as the film school to go to. Well, I think for me, in choosing AFI, um, I had already been in New York for a while and I was doing films, working on sets, and I knew what I wanted to do. And I knew when I was thinking about film schools that a lot of the education was broad um, before they got to kind of specific disciplines. So with AFI, it being a conservatory um, and having kind of like interdisciplinary options and I could go in and focus solely on directing. That was probably the biggest thing why I knew I wouldn't have to deal with the things that I didn't care for, the things I already knew that I didn't want to do. I could focus specifically on directing. And how's it been so far? Um, super intense, man. Super intense. Um, the workload has been insane. It's pretty much a seven day a week uh, commitment. Damn. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. Um, and then our expectation our first year is to direct at least three projects. And that's outside of any homework or class related exercises or things like that. Um, We're to, we're to direct uh, three films. Um, So yeah, it's it's pretty intense. Any length? Uh, Yeah. So, I mean, typically just any, anywhere under 20, 20 minutes or less, max like 20 minutes. Um, So, but it's full on like uh, production cycles, like the script and all that. There's no like, um, yeah, it's full on film that you would you know hope to put into festivals but they're not they're not they're not allowed to leave um afi they're just exercises but um yeah they're they're definitely um what you you know would do if you're making a film outside yourself it's the same expectation what, what do you mean by they're not allowed to leave afi so afi uh funds these three films that we do in our first year and they're uh, seen as exercises. There are particular uh, restrictions around them um, and what we can do and can't do around those films. But the actual function of them is not for us to make these films that we submit to festivals, but to really delve deep into the actual filmmaking process in our respective disciplines. Um, because we all kind of partner up from our disciplines and come together around one project. And the actual belief is that it's the process over the product. And those films are used as a part of our curriculum, especially as directors, in seeing kind of where our strengths lie, where areas of improvement lie. Um, And those films are kind of used in our curriculum to kind of teach us better form and better practice um, in and around directing. So it's not just kind of product-based. Got you. Got you. And um, Kofi, what has your experience been like at the New York Film Academy? Um. So for me, I came into the as a, this kind of film world uh, unconventionally, right? So graduated school um, for a completely different degree, um, really for the sake of my parents and being an African, um, coming from Ghana when I was younger. Uh, film was never really a, an option in my world, right? I never thought about it. Storytelling is, is the core of our, our human culture, right? But mm-hmm. I was never kind of... Nobody ever told me like, hey, you know, you could tell stories for a living or, you know, you can um, make films and do these things that you're watching on TV. Um, so it wasn't until I kind of went on a self journey myself and then I found myself um, kind of wanting to do more and tell these stories and tell my stories um, growing up and what it's been like uh, in order to connect with people. So I, I came to New York and I was working in sports management and um, I was looking for an opportunity to, to one, kind of see if I can do this, right? And to 
um, see what all the hype is, right? Because you see filmmakers, but we don't really know how they get there, right? And we don't know what it takes to get there, and we don't even know their qualifications to get there. Um, so going to New York Film Academy, for me, I wanted a grand scheme of things. I knew directing and screenwriting was, was where my, my heart lies and my, my kind of my passion is, but I think it's so inset, uh, essential for a director to know everything. So I wanted to know every single piece of it, every single role that's in, entailed in filmmaking, right? Um, so that I can therefore become a better director um, because I am the keeper of the story and the story until so many different pieces, right? So with New York Film Academy, they give you a grand scheme of like experiences while I still focusing on your directing. Um, sometimes you play different roles um, and that's very important because then I mean, you kind of sit into seats of these diff different roles to better understand. Um, so like sometimes I was an actor, sometimes I was just a DP, sometimes I was just um, a sound designer, but all these different pieces um, kind of have come together to make me who I am, uh, the filmmaker I am and why I used it, so many different elements um, to make my films. Mm -hmm. oh. um, Go ahead. What would you both say you um, primarily learned in film school that you didn't know prior? Like, what's one big theme that constantly comes up when you make movies? Every every filmmaker is different, right? Um, and and you always hear this thing of like, you're gonna get out of film school what you put into it. Um, so it's like. Yep. Then that's like one of the first things that I heard and I never really understood, right? But once you go through it, you realize that like everybody's learning the same thing, but not everybody's going to leave with the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So the things in which you're teaching, the things in which you're learning, um, it's really important for you to go in there with an intent and make sure and you, you kind of reapply that intent in everything you're learning. Um, because if, if you're, I think, I should think naturally as human beings, storytelling isn't a it's not a theoretical thing right we're all humans and we can all do it so it's like while you're learning these different elements of film it, it's almost it's almost as if we're not learning but something is being awakened in, in you right like you realize like, oh wow i knew this but i didn't know this was a thing that you know i didn't know this was an element of film but like wow, i know empathy everybody knows empathy but that's the core of storytelling right so it's, it's just interesting to me in that um but i think the number one thing for me especially was uh, you're going to get what you put into film, uh, film school. So I completely agree uh, with you, Kofi. I think it's, that's super true. It's definitely what you put in. But I guess what, I, what I've what i learned or am, am learning in the process is that um, it's just really hard to make a film, like a, a good film. Mm. I think because of, you know, technology and access, like I think it's, more feasible to actually go out and attempt to make the project. When you think about all the films that you've been inspired by um, that made you want to make, you know, be a filmmaker, no matter what, you know, what role you want to play in filmmaking, those films you imagine are like really good or they resonate with you in a particular way. And that feat in itself is a very hard one um, to do. And, and just like learning over the past years and change, you realize that like it just takes a lot of people. It takes a lot of people and it takes just great collaboration to really get yourself to a place where you're making a great film. Like you can't do it alone. I think Kofi said something that was super true. It is about knowing the components and what it takes to make a film and knowing, um, knowing the roles that everyone plays so you can actually be a strong collaborator. Um, and I think when you're in like a place like New York, uh, potentially, and you're kind of in the indie space, you feel like you have to be this kind of one man band, right? Um, whether you're making a film or a web series, but I think, the thing that I've learned is how, you know, how the process is actually set up for you to not do this thing alone. And if you can actually learn how to collaborate and get a team around, you can make something super impactful, mm. um, which I think is like, you know, it's not a luxury typically like indie, you know, filmmakers have because you kind of have to be kind of your own biggest kind of cheerleader. But um, it's, I mean, I think the actual, I just have a greater respect for all filmmakers and I'm like less than likely kind of dismiss a project um, because it's just, it just really hard to get, get a project made, but also for that project to be, like, effective. And, good. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, like, it's a, kind of a humbling thing, I guess what I'm trying to say. The biggest thing is that going to a very humbling. Room, yeah, it, it's super humbling, man. It challenges you in the best way. <laughs> um, yeah, without question. And I think that we all need a little bit of that, mm -hmm. um, for sure. Yeah. So, Tyree, 
prior prior to you going to AFI, you were like adamant about Londe and I going to AFI. You're like, yo, you got to go to AFI, blah blah blah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Why? Yeah. Why are you so adamant about it? Oh man. Um. Whew. I wish I would have known the questions. I could have like prepared all my bullet points to, like, <laughs> and steal it. Um. Nah, man. I think it's. I mean, honestly. A space like AFI, first of all, it's not too many people that look like us that, that are in that space, right? Mm, mm. Um, but then you get to that space, right? And then once you realize that and you start to get to the work, you realize like, oh man, like this is a part of kind of what I think the difference is between some of our kind of, you know, white counterparts or just other filmmakers who just have access and have a better understanding of how the industry works. Because for us, we always are working from the outside breaking in and then people kind of commodify our uniqueness and what we do For sure. um, we don't ever and we don't really ever get a hold of like what is it you know like we don't get to kind of truly understand what is it about this industry like we learn on the fly in kind of aggressive way and if we make one or two wrong decisions then we're kind of like you know playing catch up for the rest of our career mm. but i think um with afi man i think it's it's an it's, it's a community and an access and a, and a, and a level of, of craft that I'm learning that I believe that we should all have access to. And I think it's just kind of, um, I think half of the battle of filmmaking is like confidence and audacity. Mm. Um, and I think for us as, as, as black filmmakers, typically we come into filmmaking and, and everything is at stake. Like right? this, our first film is a film that we spent every single dollar in our pocket to make. And we needed to, we needed to break, you know, we needed to go into every festival. We need to do this thing. We don't have the luxury of like, actually like our learning curve, is like so skewed because mm -hmm. there's so much at stake. Mm -hmm. um, and I think our European counterparts or our, you know, white American counterparts, like film is like this true luxury for them. So they get to explore more and kind of navigate their voice in a particular way and understand craft in a particular way. For us, it's always like everything is at stake every time we step on the set. And I think um, in having a space like AFI, which facilitates the process in the filmmaker, um, you just grow exponentially from mm -hmm. film to film. Um, but you learn so much craft and you really understand the function on a technical, spiritual, you know, philosophical and practical level with is asked of a director and like a, a great storyteller and a collaborator. And I think those are the things that are imperative for us to continue to tell our stories across the, across the gamut. Um, Tyree and Kofi both talked about yeah. filmmaking being like a craft that obviously is developed in film school. Um, if you had to do like a ratio or percentage, how much of it do you think is intuitive? And then how much of it do you feel somebody can learn via craft development in a, you know, a school setting where they're learning about filmmaking? All the time? I want to say, I really want to say, cause like, I feel like every filmmaker is really different, you know? Um, so <laughs> like some, some people are, are kind of better at the schooling and they need that schooling in order to become a better filmmaker. And some people, really just have an intuitive sense of them, right? Um, but I do think everybody needs to come and come and like, if it, there's a common tongue, right? That everybody needs to know. And then most certainly you can pick it up on the fly, but philosophically, you know what I mean? Um, ethically, there's certain things that you do need to go to film school to understand, um, just so you can kind of speak in that common tongue amongst the other filmmakers. Um, but I would say it's really personally, personally, I think I would say 75%, 25%. 75% um, of? 75% it's intuitive, 25% um, uh, school. Mm. Um, I, I would say I say that because one, one, right? There, it is, like I said, every filmmaker is different. But two, everybody goes to school. And different people graduate, but not everybody does the job in which they learn at school. So it's like, you can go to film school, you can learn all these things, but not everybody's going to become a filmmaker. Not, not everybody's going to become a director. Not everybody's going to become a producer. You might go to film school and figure out, this is not what I want to do. You know what I mean? I just learned all of this for nothing. Right? So like, that's just, that's just that kind of like the, the, the class, you know what I mean? Kind of, you learn different things, you, you execute differently. It opens your mind, your, your perspective, which is very important. But I do think a lot of it is intuitive. I do think if, if an individual really wants to, 
you can create your own film school. Mm. You know what I mean? You mm-hmm. can you can be on set. You can do the research. You can take these different like, kind of miniature courses. You can talk to directors. You can talk to producers, and you're getting that same education, right? Um, and and also like the as far as like going philosophically, you can read all these things. The Werner Herzog of the world. You know, we can go all the way back. You can get all these books and read. So it's like it it can be very because mind you, I'm also thinking of our people and financially we don't got it right so it's like to say that your 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 kind of your path has to go through film school in order to get on the other end i don't want to say that you know because i think you're going to have your own film school so yeah. um before see, see. before you jump in tyree um kofi why why uh why new york film academy um to me new york film academy because one i was in new york <laughs> it was the closest to me if i had it my way and if i had it financially I probably went to UCLA, mm-hmm. right? I, I probably would have went across the world, but I don't come from that background, right? I can't even go back and really explain filmmaking to my parents. They don't understand that. You know, that's <laughs> not a thing. So, <laughs> so it's like, I, I just want to close the uh, proximity and I wanted to continue like doing my own freelancing while I was taking courses so that I can, you know, further grow and further build these networks. Because mind you, while a lot of things is done in LA, there's a lot happening in New York, right? If you mm-hmm. really, really go at it, right? Um, yeah. So one, it was really just, I think, proximity for me um, and financial, what I could actually, what I thought I could, you know, at least afford. Mm-hmm. Okay. Tyree, yeah. do you want to answer Londe's question? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, I think, um, yeah, I mean, I think hopefully you knocked it out the park, man. And I think, so a part of, I guess to kind of backtrack for a second. So a lot of what you'll see, especially, in in filmmaking for us as 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 people of color and being filmmakers a lot of times on bigger sets on larger things i think what happens is that a lot of your crew a lot of your you know people in service of story below the line a lot of kind of your technical people will try to use their knowledge to kind of like put you kind of in this weird space so with you know if if you could go to film school i think it helps level the playing field where you kind of learn like you said like the tongue of and the language of how to communicate with all your collaborators so that's like super, super important. But I think for me, as someone who's not even a big school person, truthfully, mm. I would say it is more it is more imperative that you have a keen sense of what's intuitive to you and you have a, a truly formed idea of the stories you want to tell um, and you have a keen sense of your taste. Um, and I think a lot of the stuff you can learn and a lot, and if you look at your, some of your favorite filmmakers who, you know, a lot of them, you know, most of your white male filmmakers had the opportunity to learn and process, like learn, make a mistake on a film. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of um, a lot of the older filmmakers, like they got a big break from like Roger Corman. So they made tons of films that were like cheap and made for TV through like the 70s and 80s, right? And then a lot of our kind of black kind of auteurs that we enjoy, um, it was their intuitive, unique stories that they wanted to tell that supported them making the film. And then they kind of learned the technical you know, kind of, you know, after, after. Mm-hmm. So I would say, I would probably say it's the same, I would probably say it's the same number. I say 75% of you kind of being still with yourself, figuring out, you know, your taste and the stories you want to tell. And then you can really learn a lot of the technical stuff. Um, you can really learn, you know, Ava's a great example. You know what I mean? She, she, she knew the story she wanted to tell and then she learned the technical stuff and you get supported too. Um, you get supported in doing that if you're telling great stories and you're mm. telling stories that people care about. So mm. I, I would, yeah, I think for you guys in particular, it's saying, you know, all, people that I know and telling them like, oh, you know, go to AFI or go to school. It's because the reality is like I, for me, it was a career choice. Like I hope to continue to do this until I'm like 80 and mm. old. And I think the only thing that levels the playing field is that um, you have a skill set. And I think Kofi can agree with this. You, you aspire to a skill set that's undeniable right because you can make a yeah. bad film but if you grab a skill set it's like ah, i can't really deny it I mean, he really knows how to tell a story he really knows how to direct mm-hmm. whether or not i like his film is another option is another thing but you know you hope to build an actual skill set where people can't devalue you because of the you know the color of your skin or your gender or whatever it is so just an option like no this person can tell stories this person can direct mm-hmm. so um that's the process and and, and my methodology and kind of going to a film school, but whether I went to AFI or I went to USC or went to NYU, like I was gonna, I'm, I'm, I was gonna make film, and that was one of the things they even, they, in my interview, they were like, "Hey, 
seems like you don't really need us. Like, it feels like you're just going to keep making it up. It seems like you're playing to stop. And I was like, yeah, I don't. But I want to kind of build kind of like some foundational pillars that I can rely on to sustain a career. So mm-hmm. I know what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. So, to yeah. jump off of that, too, I think it's, it's, it's also a matter of equipment, right? So, like, like um, right? So it's like, one, I, I, when I, when, once you kind of realize what you want to do and the light hits, you mm-hmm. then kind of, especially in filmmaking, you then like, how am I going to do it, right? Um, one, yep. you cannot afford all this equipment, especially being like a young person. Um, mm-hmm. It's like film school gives you that opportunity as well, right? So it gives you the, the cameras, the lighting, <clears throat> the sound equipment, the editing room that you can kind of, you know, master your craft. Like you said, like, it's absolutely a craft that you have to master, right? It's absolutely a craft that you have to master. Like, you're not going to be just m- making um, little pieces here and there and think you know how to make films, right? Because it's just so deep in the, in the understanding. Yeah. Um, yeah. I often hear that, like, you sometimes have to be, like, a psychologist to make a good film, right? Because, mm. like, the, the human nature in which you're trying to, like, tell is yeah. it's so yeah. deep and complex right so like yeah. there is a level of learning that absolutely has to be there right yeah. you, you don't have to go into film school to do that but you have to learn right yeah. you have to do your work you know what i mean whether it's three years a year a month yeah. whatever it is you, know, you have to do the yeah. learn you have to learn from the past you have to learn from the present you have to learn about the equipment the language you know because like yeah every every filmmaker should be able to walk on a set and be respected right and if you don't know what you do if you don't know what you're doing and people aren't going to respect you and especially if you want to be a director and you want to kind of lead the front how can you not know what you're doing how can you not know what your dp is doing how can you not and if you don't know say you don't know so that you can further learn right because like it's a continuous process we're telling stories about humans that change every five months right so it's like okay um, you're gonna, you've got to realize that you, you don't know everything. You'll never actually know everything. Um, but like Trace said, like you, you need these learning skills, you know what I mean, to level the playing ground. So. Right. And you need collaborators too. So for, forget yeah. all the craft stuff. You, you literally can't make a, a successful film, like a feature film alone. And one of the things that I think people undervalue in going to film school is like you guys are some beautiful black film space. You actually built a network. You, you literally built a network, which I always tell you guys is invaluable, right? Because it's the equivalent of going to film school. You pay to go to school with people that you hope to be your lifelong collaborators. That's like a big part of it. Like when I if I when I leave and I want to make a feature film, like I have literally a list of people that I can reach out to to help make that idea possible, right? And prior to school, you know, going around New York. I might have had a few people here and there, like hit or miss, but like these people have been vetted with me over the course of two and a half years, you know, three years, however long. And I know what I can count on them to do. And that's the invaluable thing because you will, you literally won't get there alone. Tyree, you mentioned like figuring out what's intuitive to you and what's you need mm-hmm. to learn. So I'm just curious to what, what's intuitive to both of you all. I mean, I think the thing that's intuitive to most people is the stories they want to tell. The thing that happens after that typically is how you want to tell them. Um, but for me, what I knew was intuitive is that I grew up, I grew up not knowing I wanted to be a filmmaker. And, but I, I grew up watching movies. So like my family, although West African, like we spent a lot of time watching films. My mom watched like Kung Fu movies, action movies, uh, you know, and my, and my older sister had me watching just like weird, weird movies. So I, I got to like, and then my, and then my, you know, my twin sister watched all the commercial Disney stuff. So I watched them. So I got to see everything. But I think the thing for me that that I knew taste and sensibility wise was that oh, I knew it was like oh, I wanted to teach films with more black faces, like actual black people living life, you know, extraordinary but also just normal. And then I grew up in the generation of like Spielberg, right? And all those kind of movies, right? So I knew I wanted to make movies that made people feel. But as I got older and I realized I wanted to be a filmmaker, then my taste started to get refined where I saw films and I literally was like, you know, European films, Japanese films. And I'm like, oh, aesthetically, this is more pleasing to watch. Like visually, this is more engaging. But I want to see kind of like almost, you know, you want to marry the two. It's like, cool. I want to see black faces on screen with a story like this in a framework like this, you know, you know, photographed like this. And that's kind of like the thing that became intuitive to me, knowing that I wanted to tell stories that varied across the, you know, the African diaspora 
And then it was like, okay. And I know, you know, I have certain visual aesthetics and certain sensibilities that I, I'm drawn to. Um, so that was the thing that was super kind of intuitive. Mm -hmm. I think naturally the stories where I, I live most, my, my favorite part of it all is the development phase in which there are no rules and everything is possible and I can do whatever mm -hmm. and my characters can do whatever and be whoever they want to be. Um, and that, that just comes naturally, right? The, the human truths that are in it, the, the conversations that happen, the dreams in which they go through, that that's completely intuitive um, for me at least. And then um, I would say my visual sensibilities is, has always been kind of something I've noticed within myself. So I think as as, it, as any young filmmaker should do, like you, you, you first must kind of learn about yourself, right? Learn about yourself, look through your past, look through the things you've done, look at what you're good at. Um, because those are the same things that are going to shine once you get on set um, and you get an idea for a film, right? Uh, if you're a visual person, the first thing you're going to see before you even see the story is, is you're going to see the, the actual story play out in your head, right? So then it's, at that point, it's like, I just got to get it on paper, right? And that's that. that say I'm getting inspired by something. And then um, I'll have an idea for a film. But once I get a uh, pen and paper, you know what I mean, to write it, it, it goes, to, you know, it kind of goes, it takes on a life of its own. So how has film school made you a better critic of film? I think it's ruined because um, I can't, I can't watch films anymore. You know, like, I'm sure. I watch films that I do enjoy. If they're really, really good, I can get lost. Um, but nowadays, as I'm watching, I'm critiquing, as I'm watching, I'm seeing the technical stuff that's being done that people aren't realizing. Uh, if it's green screen, green screen, I can you know I can pretty much pick it up like that you know. But it's like it's, it's hard these days to just really get lost in a film um, unless like I really really zone out. Uh, oh man! But it's also it really helps too because you, you're kind of you're, you're learning. Like I said, you're continuing to learn constantly um, in everything you do after film school. So after That's all, you're um, I, I don't know, man. It's, it's weird. Maybe so. It's like twofold. So. I think it's made me definitely, I've always been critical just as a, as, as a kid. I've always been opinionated and super critical. And like, I was the person who would say I didn't like something, but I watched the whole thing so I could tell you like why I didn't like it. Um, so film school has only like made that kind of, not worse, but I less, I less care about being super critical of a film because I can watch a film now. And, and I'm almost like, if it's not working, instead of me saying like, oh my God, it's a terrible film. I now have the luxury of being like, okay, why isn't it working for me? Because I know it's working for someone, right? Because I believe audiences like vary. Like it's very seldom that you find a film that unanimously everyone's like, oh, it's the worst film we've ever seen. Like that's that 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 that's just you know, it's too subjective. But for me, I always try to personalize it because I don't want to feel like my opinion is the only one. So I'm like, oh, why isn't it why isn't it working for me? And now I feel a lot more empowered to kind of solve that, even in the theater sometimes. Um, but then also in going to film school and knowing what it takes to make a film, it's actually super encouraging now. I usually watch films and I'm typically inspired because I'm like, oh, I can do this. Like, I actually understand fundamentally what's happening right here. Cool, this is within my wheelhouse. Like, I can kind of pull this off. So I'm like strangely critical of films, but also like I'm still able to kind of escape because I actually enjoy watching films. Like, it's actually therapeutic to me. So it's like, I almost like in film school, like I, I have an opinion, but then like I still can enjoy a film. I can kind of watch it objectively. So when I go to a theater still, I just kind of, I can still get into a film. Now, if it's bad, I'm just like, oh, okay. Why is it not working for me? Cool. And then I try to see if that holds through until the very end. So it's kind of like a weird exercise, but I typically still enjoy film and I can still be critical of them, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um what's something that you constantly see all the time? One thing I hear from film students is structure, structure. Um, what, what point, what sticks out for you or what do you, I guess what component of film grinds your ears the most if it's not well done? I, I think for me, the thing that kind of sticks out to me like a sore thumb is um, the inconsistencies of like the, how the story is told to me. So essentially, when you're filmmaking, you're making a film, like a feature length film, you're in the first maybe 10 minutes or so, you're teaching the audience how to watch your film, right? Like you introduce some visual language, you introduce whatever the quirks or whatever about the world or however you're going to tell the story, we get a sense of like how we're going to digest the story. 
So I think people um, decide how they're going to lead the audience. Do they want them to put two and two together equals five, meaning that they want them to kind of put the clues together and infer for themselves, or do they just want to lay it on like two plus two equals four every single time, this is what it is, and this is how I'm going to tell you the story. And I think for me, the thing that kind of sticks out to me the most in films is when that's inconsistent, where I'm watching a film and it's telling me that, oh, figure this thing out, and all of a sudden, like, exposition starts coming they start telling me the story and i'm no longer i no longer get to engage in the same way that i've been engaging it for like the first 40 minutes or like the first hour or it starts off like i'm gonna spell everything out to you and then i'm like you know so i, I kind of take a seat and i let the story you know unfold and all of a sudden i have to start asking questions like wait what's what's happening wait wait how how, how does this thing you guys didn't tell me anymore like now nah, i have to try to figure it out um i just really prefer when a filmmaker's intent is consistent across the board and how they want to tell me the story because then I can truly take it in and decide if I like it and why I don't. But when the inconsistencies and in how the story is being told to me and how the audience should experience it, like I'm super sensitive to that. Mm. Uh, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For me, I would have to say the story and I would say the script, right? It's threefold. Mm -hmm. The story, the script and the actor. I think certain things are just too, sometimes are forced, right? Um, mm -hmm. They're really forced as in like, this person did not have to be uh, emotional. Did not have to say like, "Oh, black people matter. We should do better." You know, what I mean, in this moment, <laughs> it just seemed a little cheesy. To me, right? So it was like, when when people aren't like kind of, it's so blatant sometimes with with the message of the story that like it doesn't even allow me to like pick it up for myself or understand it or like you know take it in because they're feeding me too much. I think that's the same thing as um, the true saying, but like. It's really, really that when, when things are such and the story doesn't flow correctly, uh, and then it becomes really predictable for me, right? So if it yeah. becomes too predictable for me at that point, I'm sorry, but I'm going to ruin the movie for everybody around me, you know, because in my head, it's like, I can see exactly where they're going. Right. I can see like, you know, the, the avenue in which this is going to go. Because mind you, I'm, 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 I already know the structure in which the film is probably set in. And I know if, I know if it's a drama a comedy, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. For sure. So, like, and then For things sure. just start to become really predictable. And, and at that point, you kind of lose the audience, right? And if I, I know if I'm picking it up, generally, your audience is much smarter than you think, right? So they probably picking it up as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, so that's, that's, that's really kind of a big thing for me, the, the storyline and then and the script as far as um, kind of trying to, trying to be too, too cliche in a sense. I don't know, cliche subject yeah. as well. Um, Subtext. That's what it is. Yeah, Subtext. you know, it's just like yeah. it's too much. You know, so a certain person like, and then and then of course, let me say that you can get a little too deep, right? Um, sometimes <laughs> uh, I think I think people go a little way above our heads, and it's like you think about it so much and you're trying to understand so much that you start to get a headache. Like, okay, I don't get this, and at that point, you need to go watch YouTube videos or you need to talk to the director or watch different things um, to then further understand it. Uh, but I think it's, it's depending on the audience. But if the audience comes in for a comedy, um, I'm expecting certain um, kind of a certain flow and a certain pattern in the in the storyline. If I'm going for a romantic comedy, I'm already expecting a certain flow and pattern within the storyline. So um, they already come in with expectations. So like, I, I often heard this thing where like you want to give the audience um, what they want, but not how they expected it, mm. right? And, and that's that's always kind of something that I try to do in my stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think to answer your question even better from before about what I, what, what we're learning in film school, what we learn, I think it's like subverting expectations, um, and then also I think like I think films are a perfect marriage of like the intellectual and the emotional. Like you need to feel and think, but you shouldn't be doing one more than the other because then then it starts to get a little wild where you see those kind of inconsistencies where it's like, I'm thinking so hard, I can't really feel the film. And then like, I'm feeling so much that it's like melodramatic and I can't even like, you know, I'm not really understanding. I'm just kind of, kind of, you know, it's getting too deep where someone's holding my hand and when you kind of get the cheesy kind of tropey stuff. But I think it is about giving the audience what they want and then kind of sub subverting the expectations. So. Okay. So what, can y'all explain like the process and what, you need to get into these schools yeah i think if i got like you said it's a conservatory so i think it's a lot stricter um as, as far as i like, get enrollment um but near film it's like kind of going on to any graduate level kind of school 
um, or if you're, you can actually go for undergrad. Um, so it's really kind of just applying to college, you know, um, your past curricular, uh, your resume, um, letter of intent, recommendations, um, sample work if you have any. Um, it, it's more kind of open, open enrollment, kind of like open and, and welcoming to, to people who may not be, I guess, the highest caliber of people, right? Um, because mind you, um, film schools is like very, very competitive, right? Very, very, very yeah. competitive. Uh, so then it's like those people who aren't getting into these top film schools, what are they doing? Are they not good filmmakers? You know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of, it's I think for those people who, who may not be getting into top film schools, um, they can also, you know, they may possibly be getting into New York Film Academy because, you know, they're kind of more... Uh, Open mind as far as uh, as far as enrollment and requirement. With applying to AFI, strangely enough, I guess for for people listening and applying to multiple like film schools, so I applied to AFI and I applied to Chapman. And strangely enough, Chapman's application was a lot more strenuous and a lot more uh, quantitative. Like I had to write a lot more essays, um, kind of have a lot more components. But with AFI, um, I had to submit. Uh, a film that was under, I think, 15 minutes. That was a narrative. And then they gave you a theme. Um, every every year, in app- the application for directors has a theme. Um, and you have to write and direct a, a film that's five minutes or less based on that theme mm. um, and submit that. And then you have an essay. And then for each film, you have like a one-page essay speaking to that process of how you made that film possible. Um, and then just your normal application, your narrative statement, um, recommendation, resume, and then there's an interview process. So if you, once you put in the application, if you're invited to an interview, there's an interview process where you sit with like the directing head and a, another professor from the discipline, um, and you guys have an interview that's somewhere between 35 minutes to like an hour. Um, and they're just like kind of trying to get to know you a better sense of your voice, kind of like your your unique intangibles and how you'll kind of merge in the space because they only bring in roughly like uh, like 25 to 28 directors a year, depending on the talent pool. Um, and so, yeah, so that's, that's, that was pretty much like the process. What's a typical like course load or week of, I know you talked about the days of the week, um, but are you like learning different things in each class? You know, what do they normally introduce people to like the first year and then kind of go more into the second year um, to get people to a point to make their thesis? Um, yes, yeah, so I think for for AFI, I think um, you really get to understand directing on just a lot of different levels, right? Because there's different types of directors, just like there are different types of storytellers and filmmakers across the board, but you start to realize kind of like everything that goes into directing so not just like oh you know i'm a director and i'm on set and i'm the person pointing and telling people what to do but also it's like your prep your process um casting working with actors like spiritually emotionally you know where you have to be you know psychologically as a director um but then also just kind of what is it because i don't think people most people don't really know the role of a director like they understand in like a larger general sense like oh this is the leader of the pack but then when you start to think about like when a director gets you know when a director argues for more weeks of prep right are they are they say oh i you know people are like well how does the director you know what, what do directors do in between them you know in between projects and that was a question that i had i'm like well i want to do a film every year mm-hmm. it's like how come most directors do like a film every two years or every three years or one every five years and you realize how much actual prep work um, and how much, you know, time they actually have to take. Like, they need to actually know that 90 page or that 120, you know, page script. Like, severely more than everyone else because everyone else will be kind of allocated to understand an aspect of it. But they have to see, like, the bigger picture of it. And yeah. then from scene to scene, they actually have to design how they're going to tell the story to an audience. And they have to decide what's important um, in the story to actually kind of like draw attention to and help lead the narrative. They have to pick what are the narrative beats, what are the important moments and kind of build 
and design an actual movie. And then people come on board to help them strengthen that design. And that, you know, is broken into a lot of different components. So that's kind of what you're learning. So every class um, is, is not, none of the stuff is redundant because it's literally like, okay, I could be in a class directing the actor, which is one aspect, but then I'm in another class called directing techniques. And I'm literally breaking down a script and looking at the narrative blocks and the dramatic blocks and the fulcrum in the scene and how, you know, and then I have a completely different class where it's like, oh, the visual design of that. How do I take the text work and the script analysis and turn it into a visual story that's impacting people? How do you think um, the school atmosphere is responding to like diversity initiatives in the industry? I think everybody realizes the importance of diversity and diverse storytelling. Um, so I think, I think it's, it's kind of, it's our time, you know what I mean? So like anybody who, who may be thinking about it or, or kind of hesitant, I think like you need to stop thinking and just act in this moment, in this, in this kind of world that we're living in currently, um, with all the leaders in which we've seen the Ava DuVernay's, um, the Asa Ray's, the uh, Ryan Coogler's of the world, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's really, really our time, you know? Um, so I think, I think now it's, more than ever, um, our stories need to be t- need to be told. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah, I think to kind of piggyback off that, I think it's it's twofold. So I think an institution like AFI, you know, wants diverse voices, but then those diverse voices get in the space, and I think they challenge the status quo. And sometimes these schools are now in a position where I think they have to play catch up, right? Because they may not have the mentorship or the you know you know, the support to facilitate certain things, right? So for me, um, as a Black, you know, male filmmaker and and even navigating my stories, right? And then in that process of saying, oh, I want to tell a story like this. And then it's like, oh, I'm, you know, with a professor who's, you know, a white professor. And then I'm like, oh, I have to educate this person in a moment. Like, oh, this is actually not this thing. It's this thing. They're like, oh, okay, cool. You know, because there's things that are, you know, universal in filmmaking, like kind of practical things and kind of like, you know, you can kind of give like, you know, story notes, but then like it's still art form. So it's subjective where it's like, you know, people always want to talk about specificity and authenticity, right? But typically most people are void of a lot of African-American experiences. So it's like, you can only, you don't know what's authentic and what's specific to an experience, but you might Mm -hmm. try to commentate on it, right? Because you've been taught through media and like oh would that really happen and i was like yeah i can call eight people to confirm that the actual <laughs> plot point in my story is valid it yeah, is true, yeah, right yeah, yeah. so that's where it starts to get you know where it's like yeah i think it's a great time i think if you're a filmmaker of color and you're like hey i really want to invest in myself because that's what it is across the board and i think hope can agree like to say i want to go to film school and say oh i want to invest in myself and i want to give myself a period of incubation to cultivate my skill set my voice and my understanding of this industry that I really want to cross into. So I think if you're feeling it now, like these schools, you know, their businesses and schools. And I think um, they want, they want our voices because the industry is asking for our voices and they want to be able to say like, Oh yeah, we've actually helped facilitate and kind of nurture these diverse voices. Um, and they're coming out of our schools and they're making an impact on the industry. So I think if you're thinking about it for sure, but even within doing that, I think, us being there is challenging the system and challenging the status quo because we're asking for other things, right? Because um, I remember being vocal in class and being like, hey, can can I see some films without, you know, old white men? Like, can we, you know, can we break down something um, that, you know, I can relate to versus like, I don't want to break down Lawrence of Arabia anymore. Can we break down something else? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, so it was mm-hmm. like getting to break down tension in the scene and watching Juice to me, was way more gratifying than watching the Alfred Hitchcock movie because I think Ernest Dixon also understands tension and I'd rather see that, you know, mm-hmm. than see, mm-hmm. you know, Vertigo, which is cool because there's a time and place for that too. But I mean, I think you can learn from all, you know, all walks of filmmakers. Mm. Y'all watched Juice in class? Oh, yeah, yeah. We had, yeah, it was, it was great, wow. man. One of, one of our, one of our professors, uh, he, he literally is like, hey, I want to show a special clip and I really want to talk about Ernest Dixon and what he's doing because he's kind of like a film appreciation guy, man. And it was like, you know, AFI is, um, it's not too many of us in our, in our cohort, like across disciplines. Like I'm one of two directors in my year and there's other like, you know, screenwriting and, and production design, editing, cinematography, there's other, you know, black filmmakers. But it's a very small group, you know, maybe like, maybe like 10 of us in my year out of like 130 something people. Mm-hmm. So 
So he puts on, he, he, he's like giving the bio of Ernest Dickinson and like all this stuff. And I'm like, he's about to show you. And I start <laughs> laughing. It's like an auditorium filled with people. And it's like, what? I'm like, he's about to show you. We're about to watch the scene. Where uh, <laughs> where like Q, <laughs> where where Q is getting chased by like my like Pac's character and all that, and I was like, oh, this is so good. I've never seen that movie blown up on the screen. I've only seen it on TV. So to watch that and have it broken down like that was great, man. But that only wow. happens when you get yeah. You're right. That only happens when we're in the room. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So Kofi, you graduated from New York Film Academy. How long ago? Uh, a few months now. A few months. What right, kind of? Exactly. Yeah, congratulations. Um, yeah. What what kind of um, resources do they offer you once you graduate? Like, or support do they offer you? Um, mind you, when you're in there, you're, you're doing a lot of networking. Um, you're meeting a lot of different people. Um, like just kind of all across the industry. Um, so beyond that. It, it's really kind of just like a network and, and and if ever you have like you make a really you make a kind of a good connection with your professors whether it be your, your directing for a professor or your editing or your sound design whatever it may be and mind you these these professors are also you know working professionals oftentimes right so if they have projects you know what i mean they're, they're always kind of hey i may have this you know want to jump on or things as such so it's really um networking is really key uh, i think that's something that's something that's always kind of preached, but the value of it isn't really realized. Um, going to different networking events, networking while you're in school, um, and continue to stay kind of connected to the to the film school because um, they they have a lot of different opportunities for you to you know to succeed. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you really come out with like a very strong thesis, I think it's 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 more direct, right? Like they'll actually line you up for certain people. Um, already in the industry and help you um, connect with different producers and things as such to get to get you rolling. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, like I said, it's it's really what you put into it. Um, kind of those years in which you're in it, whether it be one year, two year, three year, whatever, whatever you're taking, um, just really making the most out of it and, and, and not taking any little opportunity for granted. Mm-hmm. Okay. And do they do they offer any like mentorship or anything like after? Yeah, of course. So, like, networking, mentorship, like I said, I can always rely on my professors if I have something. Um, I'm actually about to direct my first commercial. Uh, oh, dope. Soon, um, and that opportunity. That opportunity. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but um, that opportunity just came from different networking events um, and kind of uh, meeting a, a director who's in the commercial world and then uh, jumping on with him to co-direct. Uh, uh, so... I can't speak. I can't say much about it, but yeah. <laughs> Can you talk about trying to convince your West African parents that this is a viable career path? <laughs> well, both <laughs> of us is out here. Yeah, I have. You know, I, I think my parents are supportive, but they really are just like, "What are you doing? Why are you doing it like this?" Um, so I'd love to hear what you guys have done to campaign. Uh, well, I'll go first. I'll go first because my answer is definitely short. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like, I don't think my parents fully grasped it, but I think the thing I will say about my parents, and maybe because you know, one's Liberian and one's Nigerian, and you know, they they came to the states in their twenties, maybe whatever. Because I'm such an intense person, and because I take the things I do very serious, like they mm-hmm. believe in me. So mm-hmm. because I go about this thing with such like this kind of fervor and energy and passion, they're just like, I don't, not sure what this is, but how are you? Still doing it. And he's real <laughs> serious about it. Now he's like going to this school with this thing. And, you know, it helps when you don't ask them for certain things, but, you know, or, or they're not the ones having to foot the bill. So this is kind of like I'm watching, like, what is this? But he keeps progressing. Like, there's always updates. There's always something bigger. So they just kind of believe in me. And it's kind of like, okay, he's going to be successful because he's taking this thing very serious and things keep changing and happening for him. So that's like my kind of way out. Mm. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. That's dope. Um, so my <laughs> my African parents uh, had no idea what um, I wanted to do was or what what I was kind of embarking on was really until the end and until they saw my thesis project and when they're like ah wow I see wow Kofi keep going I was like really <laughs> now you're gonna tell me to keep going 
people when I was telling you, like, no, just go be a doctor, be a lawyer. So, right. Oh, come on. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's understandable, right? Because I think the culture in which we come from, um, it's, it's almost a certain validation that you get when your son's a doctor or your son's a lawyer or he's a professor or something. You know, something that always comes from, like, the educational world, right? Because higher learning sure. is praise, right? If you got the more degrees you are, you have, right. uh, the kind of more reputable you are in our culture. Right? So it's like not understanding that mom, dad, like this is a lot of learning I have to do. There's a lot of education in this. You know what I mean? Like I come out with a degree, you know, that gave them a certain level of uh, comfort. But and then once they saw my thesis and they're like, wow, like this is big. Like not only are you like you've come out with a like a, a certain level of education, I'm proud of you. You did it. You set your mind on something. You did it. I'm proud of you. But also there's nobody behind you, like nobody we know from our village or nobody we know of our family that is doing this. So like that, I think, is what's most kind of dumbfounded for them. Like, it's just, it's just like, wow, like, like nice. we've never, like, you know, their perspective has, has now changed of like what my little cousins can be and what my, my, my sisters can be and what my nephews can be. So I think that that's what kind of it settles my heart, you know, that, that makes me even more proud than anything. And what about this? What about the financial commitment of film school? You know, because that, that's also something that is a deterrent for a lot of people. How did you kind of get your family to buy into it? How did you personally commit well, to it? Well, me personally, I just want to thank uh, Nickelodeon. Uh, I was working <laughs> under Nickelodeon at a, a program to go back to school, um, a tuition reimbursement program. So that helped me. Um, as far as financially, uh, I did I, I did come out of my pocket a little bit, but it wasn't as much as I had to um, without them. So I just I it's on I was just lucky. I think uh, financially, I, I know that's one of the the biggest determinant um, determining factors of, of any film school. So I can't really yeah. speak to that because I just got lucky. Yeah, I think I would have to say the same, and I would say it's an investment because for me, I just I knew I was applying to film school for a year, so I took my application super serious. And I applied to, um, I applied for scholarships like through AFI. Um, and then I knew I would have to take out loans. And then you know, during that process, um, that's what it was. It was scholarships and loans that, that, that got me through. But um, yeah, it was the application process because in the same vein, kind of to piggyback off, they want our voices. And I think they also know that it's, it's our voices um, come with a particular price tag. So I think in the school that that's a, big way to show for a school to show their investment in you is what they're willing to give you so you can actually attend mm. um so if you take your application and the work that you put forth is, is serious i think you'll find the right pairing you know the school that responds to you and says like oh we love your stories we love what you're doing let's give you some money to go there that's the school that's the school essentially you go to right because mm -hmm. whatever you know make make uh you know whatever you make of it in your time so i think for me it was like invest in the things i could control which is like my scholarship application, my actual application, the films that I was putting forward, um, and then you know making sure that I was I could actually you know get approved for a loan, um, things like that. So that was that was how I was able to sustain. Okay, dope. Nice. Um, is there are there any other gems you guys want to drop before we wrap up the podcast? Yeah, I think if you're a filmmaker, man, you're listening and you're like, hey, I don't, you know, whatever reservations you have about your ability or how you know, you want to make films. I think the biggest thing you owe yourself is to just start, right? And just because you're listening to us talk about AFI and New York Film Academy means nothing. Like, you don't ever have to step into any of those two institutions to get everything you need um, to be a successful filmmaker. But you have to be proactive about education because education can be unconventional, but you have to be super proactive about that because when you start making the films that I know each of us aspires to make, there's going to be too many people relying on you and they're going to be relying on your, 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 your education, your knowledge of what you're doing to support. And they're going to be in service of that. So you owe it to yourself to take that time and kind of build that wealth of knowledge of how to, you know, succeed in what you're doing and how to execute um, at the highest level. Um, and it doesn't have to happen in film school. I think it's a lot easier. I think you're supported in ways that are astronomical um, that support your growth, that it, that support a smooth transition into the industry potentially. Um, and it's a showcase of sorts, but you can, you know, you can do that in Louisiana in your own backyard mm -hmm. if you take the time. 
you can, you know, you could do it, you know, in Brooklyn, you could do it wherever, but you have to be proactive and you have to, um, you know, be super intentional about that. Hmm. Um, to, to kind of give something different, um, but, but, but in tangent to that, uh, when you yeah. do decide to take that proactive step, realize that this is a journey. Like this is a journey and it is hard. It is hard because one, it's, it's, it is external, right? All the information that's coming to you externally, but then you're going to be forced to go internal, like really deep within yourself, right? Mm-hmm. To understand your story. So you, you'll, you'll question your times at times. You'll question yourself at times, right? Like, am I good? Sure. Is this even valid? Is this, this is a dumb idea. You're looking around at your white counterparts, at your this counterparts, at your professors, you're watching movies and you're like, wow, this is so good. And you're like, oh man. So it's like, really 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 kind of both external and an internal journey um that can really eat you alive if you want prepared for it right so before you even take that step I, I just want you to really take your time and really really ask yourself if this is what you want because like um terry said like this like this is a big responsibility right like like yeah. stories are how we live right it's literally how we dream we live um as human beings so like if you're going to take on this journey, just make sure you understand that you have such a big responsibility. And mind you, there aren't a lot of us in, in, the, in the industry, right? So that's even more pressure, right? So you just got to make sure that you're understanding of the kind of the roles of responsibility that you're, you're taking upon um, in taking this kind of step towards it. And then just get ready to work, right? And mind you, when you're tired, go to sleep. You know, you're like, like, just go to sleep, right? <laughs> Go to sleep, but you have to wake up. That's the thing, right? I sometimes I I remember when I was making my um <clears throat> my thesis and production wise everything was just screwed, and I just, I just cried, okay? and so I just had to cry because I was just like, like everything I'm doing is just not working to make this happen, and I know the story needs to be told in this particular manner, um, and then the best advice I got at that time was just like just go to sleep, Kobe, <laughs> and I I just went to sleep. And literally in my sleep and in my dream, I, I solved the problem, which I couldn't, I couldn't figure out, right? So it's like, 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 don't be so hard on yourself, right? But, but understand that it is a journey and it is tough and you will have ups and downs. Um, but you have to have that visionary kind of, um, like, just grill and grit, right? You just have to be, you have to know what you want. Um, you have to know it's possible to keep going every single day. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, good luck. I'll awesome. 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 Thank you all so much for joining us on the Black Film sure. Space podcast. Thank you, Kofi and Tyree. Um, where can Thank you, where uh, where can our audience find you on social media or all my social media is always uh, just Kofi Dorma. Um, so, yeah, anywhere. Just Kofi Dorma. Yeah, I mean, same thing for me. Uh, yeah, all my social media is uh, Tyree Waribi. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for listening to the Black Film Space podcast. If you're interested in being part of our community and attending events, please visit us at blackfilmspace.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Black Film Space. Subscribe to our email list and podcast. All right, see you soon.